The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. This little nugget right here is a micro servo. And while it is perfectly capable of doing simple tasks like adjusting the ailerons of a lightweight RC airplane, if I want to do something that requires a little bit more oomph, then I'll need to get a larger, stronger servo. The only problem is they also come with a much larger price tag. So that got me thinking, why don't I just make my own? Well, it just so happens that a few years ago, a friend gave me this lovely soda can sized motor, which I think will make an excellent heart to my own giant servo. So let's get to it. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is DJ, and this is a DC motor. If you want to give one of your electronic projects a little more get up and go, then an electric motor is a simple, effective way to do that. And they come in a variety of different shapes and sizes with varying speed and torque capabilities. Controlling a motor is easy enough. Just supply it with the right voltage and enough current and it will happily move along. But what if you want it to rotate at a consistent speed or move to a certain position? Well, for that, you'll need to have some sort of sensor coupled to the output of your motor in order to get feedback. Then you can measure and adjust according to the feedback that that sensor provides. This process of moving, measuring, and adjusting is a closed loop. There are countless different examples of closed loop systems in the world of electronics, but today we're gonna to focus on one, and one of my favorites, which happens to be the RC Servo. This is a fantastic, accurate, and most importantly, cheap solution for having an actuator that can move to a set position. Okay, so, Let's talk about the parts that are actually going to go into this design. Now I'm going to show you, rather than tell you, about some sort of theoretical schematic that describes everything. Now, we've already got the motor, which of course will be the heart of the servo. Now it's important to note that this is a 24 volt DC motor and it's rated at 2500 RPM. Now this is important to note, um, one, for our motor driver and also um, for the mechanical uh, setup we're gonna have later because 2500 RPM is way too fast. Um, and I'll definitely need to gear that down. And I'll talk about that later in the mechanical design portion of this video. Now, if I've got a motor, that means I need to control it some way. Now, I could uh, create my own H-bridge using MOSFETs or what have you, but I've done that in the past and there's not a whole lot to learn there. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna be using this uh, Wii motor driver. Now you might be thinking, hey, that's too Wii. This is clearly a large motor that, you know, sucks up a lot of current, um, but you'd be wrong. I actually measured this a while back and even under full load, it uh, only draws about an amp and a half, which is well within the spec um, for this motor driver. So this will save me a lot of time and keep things nice and tidy. Now, in order to measure the output shaft, which of course will be geared down, I'm going to use a potentiometer. Now, just like uh, cheaper servos um, that also use potentiometers, uh, this is just a really tried and true way to measure the uh, angular position of a shaft. Now, of course, the downside being that this is a mechanical device, it wears out over time, so it won't be as accurate, but then again, I'm not going into production with this thing. I'm just making one. Now this happens to be a, let's get this in focus, a 10K potentiometer and it's a 5% uh, precision, which is good enough. Um, and 0.25% uh, or plus or minus 0.25% linearity, um, which is pretty good. And it's got a nice uh, quarter inch or 6.35 uh, millimeter diameter shaft, um, which is nice and easy to couple to. Now, in order to tie this whole shebang together, I'll need some sort of electronic brain, um, which means, in my case, a microcontroller. So I'm gonna use this feather board, um, which is just an M0 feather, which is a 
nice tidy little ARM uh, Arduino compatible board. Um, nothing, nothing too special, but I had it lying around. Now, in order to power all of this, I'll also need a power supply. Now, while this is rated for 24 volts, uh, I'm gonna keep it simple and just go with a 12 volt power supply. So I've got this nice uh, TDK Lambda AC to DC power supply. And this is a 100 watt power supply, which um, is certainly overkill, um, but it'll do the job just fine. And I'm going to integrate this into the case so it'll be one unit. Now to keep things uh, even more tidy, I'm going to have a power entry module. And this is just a really clean way to have a uh, switched AC source um, that doesn't have a cable sticking out of it. And it's a bit more hardy than just a little barrel jack. Um, so this will be the exterior connection to main power. Now this is gonna run off 12 volts, but this feather actually doesn't have um, a higher voltage regulator. Um, it can only handle five volts. So I'll need another regulator, in this case, this tiny little buck converter, and this will step down uh, the 12 volts from the AC to DC power supply into a nice clean five volt source for my microcontroller. Now, that's it. That's all of the parts. Um, let me do a little bit more testing and I'll explain how this is all gonna go together. All right, so one of the big things we need to figure out is what speed this actually runs at. So even though it's rated for 2,500 RPM, that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna run at 2,500 2, RPM at 24 volts. And if anything, we're gonna be running it at 12 volts so I need to know uh, the true output of this motor. Now I've gone ahead and put a piece of masking tape on here because I've got a cheapo tachometer. So I'm going to use my uh, desktop power supply and we'll spin this up and see what uh, the actual uh, speed of the motor is. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's go to voltage. So. Let's just, let's start out at five volts. Turn this on. Get that in there. So 800, so there's a decimal. It's a little hard to see, there's a decimal. So it's 796.6. It's gonna have to do one-handed. So let's go up to nine volts. So let's measure that again. So we're at about 14.65. At nine volts, let's bump that up all the way to 12 volts. So let's say about 1980 RPM. I like that, I'm gonna round up just a little bit. It's a nice even number. So let's go ahead and turn that off. All right, so quick math tells me that if I want this at 60 RPM, uh, that's around 30, anywhere from 30, 35 um, to one reduction. So I need to gear this down. Uh, well, how am I gonna do that, huh? So I've actually done the math and it turns out that 1980 divided by 60 is 33. Now that's kind of a wonky ratio to have uh, in multiple stages. So I'm actually gonna tweak that to 36 to one, which will give me an RPM of 55, which I can totally live with. Now, normally I could just use gears, um, but I've had these timing belts that are pretty cool. They're Kevlar reinforced, and I've got two of them and I haven't used them for anything. So I think I'll use two timing belts um, and some pulleys in order to actually uh, create my gear reduction. So I'll do a six to one reduction and a six to one reduction. So that will give me a grand total of 36 to one, and that will give me 55 RPM but I probably need to make some sort of mechanical case in order to test this out. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside.
Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360, and the case, uh, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. Uh, I've just mostly modeled the parts that I need. Um, I've got my motor, we've got the uh, feather bore, power entry module, potentiometer, and the power supply. So you can see I've got my pulleys here, just a 12 tooth and a 72 tooth. Um, and these are, these are all equal, um, just keeps things nice and simple. So here's my first uh, six to one and my second uh, six to one. And these are just on uh, quarter inch shafts. And there are some bearings that are gonna be mounted in these plates. So um, just one bearing for this guy. It's actually gonna be, it's gonna be pulled um, symmetrically. So once up here and once down below, so that'll be uh, relatively even and then up here we've got two bearings just to keep that uh, relatively secure and this is coaxial with the potentiometer um, and we'll just have uh, those wires run out to here to uh, the feather board and keep uh, the power supply electronics down at the bottom now i've also got a hole at the back so we can run some wires uh, i think i'll just have um, it controlled like a regular servo, so we'll just measure the pulse width um, of a servo tester, and that is how we'll connect and control it. Uh, most of this is going to be 3D printed. Uh, I had hoped to make this into one solid case, um, but it's just a little bit too large for uh, my print bed, so I split up into multiple parts. Um, but I've got some plates that are going to be made out of uh, quarter inch HDPE, which I've got a lot of laying around and it is super uh, easy to machine. So that will make up the main structure of the case. Um, and for the most part, it uses quarter 20 hardware, um, not because it needs it. That's totally overkill, but it's just a lot easier and faster uh, to machine out uh, quarter inch holes. Um, or 6.35 millimeter holes. And, oh, yeah, I've also got a horn right here. Um, so this is uh, 100 millimeters center to center. And we'll use that for some torque testing once this is ready to go. And that's about it. It's pretty simple. Um, how about I go make it and put it together and then we can start testing it. Okay, it is time to test. I've got the servo almost completely assembled and right now I'm just going to test the motor. So I've got a sample application running on the microcontroller and I've got the horn attached. So the potentiometer is disconnected. Uh, we're not doing any feedback right now, just going to rotate the motor and make sure that everything is powered and wired correctly, which I've triple checked and I've tested it already, but I'm gonna do it for the camera so you guys can see it too. Uh, let me plug this in and we'll give it a go. So I plug in my AC connection. And for right now, I'm also not powering the uh, microcontroller off of the regulator. So I'm gonna, because I'm gonna be programming it still. So I'm gonna plug in this external power bank. Let me just turn it on. Did something come loose? Ah, my, there we go. Hey. Not sure what the wine is, but uh, we'll get to that later. What matters is that this works. It's powered on, we can control it. So why don't I measure it and figure out how to make this into a right proper servo. All right, 
I've gone ahead and written a very basic program, super duper minimal, uh, just to allow me to control the giant servo. Now, one thing I should have considered earlier on, which I'll have to swap out at some point in the future, is the fact that this is a 10K potentiometer for measuring the output shaft, which means that for a single revolution, I'm only getting a tenth of the voltage swing I would get if this were a single turn potentiometer, which means that the ADC doesn't really measure a whole lot of difference, of course, of course, across uh, the range of one revolution, which means it's a little bit choppy. But uh, it's strong enough and good enough to test, so let's test it out right now and we'll get to the fiddly bits later. Now, I need something to actually weigh, and since I don't have any sort of precise weights, I figured I'd go ahead and fill this plastic container with water, and that way we can adjust and precisely measure how much uh, power this guy has. So let me set this up, let me fill this with some water, and we'll start testing. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, that's, that's it? What, let's see more, let's see how much raw power this thing has. And I would love to, but there's just one teeny tiny problem. Now, this was made almost completely with parts I had on hand. Um, the only things I got were the uh, parts I ordered from Newark, really. Now, these shafts aren't ideal. They're just uh, D shafts and they're kind of puny. And of course, these parts are 3D printed. So, when something's gotta give, something's gotta give, and that's gonna be the weakest link in the mechanical system. And in this case, that means the PLA of the pulleys, because as you'll observe, if I hold the horn, which is uh, nicely mechanically coupled um, to the output shaft, I can spin the first pulley and it moves freely. And I can look down and see that the output shaft isn't moving, hooray! Because the D slot uh, inside the pulley has totally sheared and now it is just a hole. A hole that transfers no power to the shaft. Oh, gonna be back to the drawing board. So, what did we learn today? Well, I certainly think this qualifies as a servo, but I definitely wanted a lot more. You know, if I'm gonna do this right, I'm basically gonna have to start from scratch. I'm gonna redesign the case, use a metal gear train, and you know, software-wise, there's a lot I could do too. Acceleration profiles, PID control, the list goes on. Is a project ever really done? But you know, for my first servo, I'm happy with it. I think it took John Servo something like 300 tries to get his first working version, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, of my first version. Anyway, that's gonna do it for myself and my giant servo friend here. If you've ever made your own giant electronic who's it or what's it, let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>